All right, I'm glad you tuned in, and I think you're going to be glad too, uh, because this review right here, um, I'm going to review this, and you're going to see problems that are going to look very, very close to this on the test. So uh, let's go through it real quick, okay? So hopefully you'll um, you'll remember some of these things I go over right now. So on the test tomorrow, you should be able to do very well. So let's start with number one. I'll just kind of use this area right here. I'll have the test out in front of me. All right, it says the tight end scored six touchdowns in 14 games. Find the ratio of touchdowns per games. So six touchdowns to 14 games, there's the ratio. But it says reduce the fractions. So we see what goes into both of these. Well, what goes into this? Two goes into this three times, and two goes into this seven times. So the ratio of touchdowns per game is three to seven. Three touchdowns for every seven games. That's all there is to it. Number two says uh, solve each proportion. So when we do these proportions, we cross multiply. I know this is a little bit small, but it's 2 over 5 equals x over 40. So we cross multiply. When we cross multiply, I get 5x equals 2 times 40. Um, I'm going to do it like this, 2 times 40 or 40 times 2. I know some of you um, don't like how I do this, but I think it's a good way to learn. You could just put it in your calculator, 80 divided by 5, or you could do this. Watch, 5 goes into 40 8 times, 8 times 2 is 16, and there you go. All right, if you wanted to go 80 divided by 5, that's fine too on your calculator, but I like to show you how to do it without the calculator. Let's do another one. Let's cross multiply right here and solve. But remember, you've got to put parentheses around this and distribute the 2 through this. So really, it's 2 times x plus 1 equals uh, 7 times 3, which is 21. Now what we do is we distribute the 2, so 2x plus 2 equals 21, subtract a 2 from both sides, and 2x equals 19, divide both sides by 2, and just leave your answer just like that. There's no reason to change your answer into a decimal or into a mixed number. Just keep it like that, and then you're done. All right, so that's pretty easy. That's 1, 2, and 3. Now let's take a look at number four. It says find the measures of the angles of a triangle if the, now what does it say? The measures of the what? Of the angles of the triangle if the ratio of the measures of the three angles is five to four to seven. Five to four to seven. And what does this represent? It represents the measures of the angles of a triangle. So we remember what we do here. We go 5x plus 4x plus 7x. Now what does it equal? It doesn't tell you what they all add up to be, but it does say it represents the angles of one triangle. And what are the angles of a triangle add up to be? 180 degrees. So when it says angles of a triangle, you put 180. All right, let's go through this. 5 and uh, 4 is 9, and 7 is 16. 16x equals 180. Divide it by 16. Divide this by 16. And let's see what x is equal to. Okay, I just taught this next problem, and I didn't realize I wasn't recording, so I'll just keep it up here and just show you what I did. It says, find the measures of the angles of the triangle. I can't remember where I paused. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to go quickly so you don't have to sit here forever. But anyway, let's see what we did. I go 5 to 4 to 7. 5x plus 4x plus 7x equals 180 because I'm finding the measures of the angles of a triangle. I add them up. I got, um, that's 9 and 7 is 16x equals 180. Divide by 16, x is 11.25. That might be where I stopped earlier. I just can't remember where I stopped. So what did we do? These are the measures that we're trying to find. This We're not just trying to solve for x, so don't just circle that and say it's the answer. Um, it's this right here. It's what I want to find. This is one angle. That's another one. That's another one. So I take that 11.25 and put it in for x. So here it is. It's 5x. 5 times 11.25 is 56.25. 4 times this is 45. 7 times this is 78.75. Those are my answers right there. So what do I do with those? Th uh, well, that's my answer. I just circle them. But if you just, just for fun, if you want to check to see if they add up to 180, go ahead, plug them in your calculator, and it will work out to 180 degrees. So that's kind of a nice thing, uh, just to kind of double check to make sure that you did it right. And that gives me pretty good confidence that I got that problem right. So that was number five. Let's move on to number six. Okay, let's take a look at this one right here. It says find the value of x. So here's an x here. That's an x minus three. It might be hard to see. Um, 
x minus 3, and this is, I got my test in front of me too, this test review. So this is x plus 1 right here. This is x plus 1. It doesn't really look like it, but that's what it is. And this is x minus 3. And uh, we got to find x, got to solve for x. Well, let's take a look. I've got two triangles right here. What do I know about these triangles? Well, I know one angle is equal to this angle right here. Well, this is 40 and that's 40, so that's another angle that's equal. So I've got two angles of this triangle right here equal to the same two angles of the other triangle. If I have that situation by angle-angle similarity, that means these two triangles are similar to each other. All right, so big deal. Well, it is a big deal to solve for the missing side because if I know that they're similar to each other, I know the sides are in proportion. So let's set up a proportion with the sides. We could do it a couple ways. We could compare from one triangle to the other, or we can compare just in this triangle these two sides to each other and then compare these two to each other. I think in class, normally we've been going from one triangle to the other, so let's do that. So let's take a look at 6 right here. Well, what angle is opposite side 6? Well, this angle C. And this angle C has no arc. See, this one has one arc, this has a 40, and this doesn't have any at all. So come over here. Which side is opposite the angle with no arc? Well, here's the angle with no arc. What side is opposite? This one right here. That's x minus 3. So that means the 6 goes with the x minus 3. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say 6, compare 6 to x minus 3. So if 6 goes with x minus 3, guess what 12 goes to? Well, let's not just guess. Let's know for sure. 12 is opposite the 40. What's opposite the 40 degree over here? The x plus 1. So if I went 6 to x minus 3, I'm going to go 12 to x plus 1. I hope that makes sense to you. That is a plus 1. Yep. All right. And now I'm ready to do what I did up here and just cross multiply. Let's do that real quick. Distribute through. I'm going to do that in one step this time. 6x plus 6. Distribute this one through when I multiply. That's 12x minus 36. Let's get the x's on the same side. Subtract 6x from this side, subtract it from this side, and I get a 6x. Add a 36 to both sides, and I get a 42. Divide by 6, and x is equal to 7. Now, do I have to plug it in and solve for the missing sides? No, because why does what does it say? It says find the value of x. So I found what x is, x is 7, and I'm good to go. Okay, look at 7. Now, 7 doesn't have any pictures with it, so the best thing to do is to um, maybe draw your own picture. It says, find the perimeter of triangle DEF if, watch, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, let's, draw, let's draw triangle ABC and DEF. Now, it doesn't have to be a specific type of triangle. You can draw any triangle you want as long as this looks kind of like this one. One might be a little bit bigger than the other. So, let's take a look. They tell you what AB is. It's 15, BC is 18, AC is 21, <clears throat> excuse me, but DE is 5. So look, AB and DE go together. AB is 15, DE is 5, so one triangle is bigger than the other one. So um, ABC is going to be bigger. So I'm going to draw, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to, oh, that's pretty bad. Okay, there's one triangle. Now you know why I use those straight lines. In fact, I'm going to go to the straight lines. I can barely help myself. All right, so there we go. That looks a lot better right there. And let's copy and paste it and just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit smaller. I know this is really small. Sorry about that, but I guess you'll have to deal with it. All right, so this is ABC. I can call it ABC. Now, watch. ABC. Let's see, where are we? Right here. ABC and DEF. So if I go ABC... I'm going to go D, E, F like this. So let's put some numbers in. <coughs> Sorry about that. Still recovering from my little cold or whatever I had. Anyway, A, B is 15, so that's 15. Uh, B, C is 18, so that's 18. And uh, A, C is 21. Right there, that's 21. And, we went, and they tell you what D, E is. D, E is 5. So there you go. It's basically like this problem or some of the other problems that we've had. Except they just um, give you the information. Now they do tell you that these are similar to each other, okay, right there. So we know that they are similar to each other. So what we have to do is find the missing sides. Um, let's. Oh, we want to find the perimeter, right? So we want to find the perimeter of DEF. So that means I have to find this and I have to find this. I'll tell you what, just to make it easy, let's call that side X and call that side Y. 
just so we don't have to call it df and ef. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to find a scale factor. Now look. This is the only side that I know in this little triangle. Well, what side corresponds to it up here? Well, the 15 does. So let's figure out a scale factor. I'm going to compare 15 to 5. Reduce that, and it's what? It's 3 to 1. Well, that's actually kind of easy. Look, this is 3 times bigger than this side right here. That's my scale factor, 3 to 1. So let's say I wanted to solve for x. Well, what can I do? I can cross multiply. If I go 15 to 5, or 3 to 1, I can go 21 to x. All right, and then watch, I can cross multiply. 3x equals 21, and x equals 7. That should make sense, because remember, this side is three times as big as this side. So if this is 21, 21 is three times as big as 7. Hope that makes sense. You could just do this, 18 and what? Well, 18 is three times bigger than what? Well, what times 3 is 18? Well, 6 is, so why is 6? I could just do it like that if I wanted to. If that bothers you, I could go 3 over 1 equals, what, 18 to y. 18 to y. Cross multiply, 3y equals 18, divide by 3, y is 6. So there's the work right there if you really want to show the work. But if I see that this is 3 times bigger than this, then this side is 3 times bigger than this one, and 18 is 3 times bigger than 6. Hope that makes sense to you. Well, you know what I just realized, and you're probably saying it all along if you've been following along with this, is that I uh, forgot uh, to do number, which one? Five. Number five. I was just looking at it. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't do that. Well, number five is very close to number four, so if you can do uh, four, you can do five. But we'll do it anyway. The ratio of the measures of the sides of a triangle is three to five to seven. So three to five to seven. It says its perimeter is 450 centimeters. Okay, well... The perimeter, write it down, is 450. So this is talking about the sides of the triangle as opposed to the, let's scooch that down a little bit, as opposed to the uh, angles of the triangle that we did on number four. So this is the sides. So these sides don't add up to 180. What do they add up to? They add up to the perimeter, which is 450. So really that's the only thing different. So let's just do what we did before. 3x plus 5x plus 7x equals 450. And now you just work this out. Uh, this is 8 and that's 7, so that's 15x, which is 450. Divide by 15, so what's that go? 3 times 30, so x is 30. But that's not my answer. The question says find the measures of each side of the triangle. I want to find this side, this side, and this side. So you go 3 times our x, which is 30, and then you go 5 times the 30, and you go what is that? 7 times the 30. All right, and then you just work these out. This is easy. That's just 90, and that's 150, and this is 210. So that's the perimeter. If you add those up, they would add up to 450. Not 180, because we're not doing the angles of the triangle this time. We're only doing the sides of the triangle. So they should add up to the perimeter, which is 450. Add them up and they will. They'll add up to 450. Okay, let's skip down to uh, what are we doing now? 8 and 9. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's move on to number 8 and 9. I gave myself a little bit more room down here. So um, again, I know it's hard to see these numbers. That little segment right there is 5. This is x down the bottom. This is 4, and this is 8. We've got parallel lines. When you have parallel lines of a triangle like that, it breaks it up into these segments. And we have a theorem that said that these segments are proportional to each other. I could compare 5 to x, or I can compare 5 to 4. Um, let's compare 5 to x. We've kind of been doing that for the most part. It really doesn't matter, so let's do that. I'm going to do that down here. So if I compare 5 to 4, watch, if I go from the top one to the bottom one, I'm going to have to compare this one to this one, or 4 to 8. Oh, not 4. What did I say 4? Why did I say 4? I don't know why. It's not a 4, it's an X. Start yelling at me. I messed up. 5 to X. Right there, that's supposed to be an X. This is 4 to 8. Probably that's what I was thinking. Well, if you look at this, you could cross multiply, and we will do that in a second. But look, this one, the bottom one, is twice as big as the top one, 8 and 4. Do you see that? This is twice as big as this. So if this is a 5, what do you think this is? This has to be twice as big as 5. And what is twice as big as 5? 10. So it should work out. Let's see if it does. 4x equals 8 times 5, which is 40. There it is. Look, I see it, don't you? Divide by 4, divide by 4, and x is 10. So that's what x is equal to. And, oops, I shouldn't circle that because it says 
what is RT? Uh oh. You know what? I messed up. I should have said RV. So I'll have to change that. That right there should be R v because we can't really find rt from this information right here so actually i want to find rv so what's rv it's this whole thing from here all the way to here well what would we just say that x was it was 10 so what is rv let me make sure yeah rv is this whole thing so this is 5 this is 10 so what's the whole thing rv is 15 glad i caught that i'll have to change that for tomorrow all right so rv is 15. Now the other one says SV. Now this is easy. Look, SV is just what X is. So really, SV is what we found for X, so I can make that a 10. All right, so there we go. Glad I found that mistake. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, 10 and 11 are kind of the same deal. Um, we got parallel lines. All right, well, I did it again. I thought I was... I thought I was... Um, recording but I wasn't. Um, Alyssa had come in to get the key for the car and I hit pause but then I guess when I hit resume it didn't resume. So here's this problem right here. I already talked through it once let me do it again. Uh, what we're trying to do is set up a ratio. Here it is all for you. I've already got it written out but look what we're gonna do. We want to find a scale factor. I've got this side is 4, so what side or what angle is this side opposite? It's opposite this angle right here, the, the vertical angle. So come over here, look at this vertical angle and see what side is opposite that, the 3. So 4 is opposite this angle, 3 is opposite the equal angle, so 4 and 3 are corresponding sides. So I'm going to take 4 and compare it to 3. That's what I did right here. I went 4 to 3. Now i got to figure out how do I compare these other two sides. Well. It's actually kind of easy because they're the only other two sides that are left that you know. So uh, you could have just figured out to compare them. But I want to make sure, look, x plus 3 is opposite this angle with no arc on it. Well, look at this side. This side is opposite this angle with no arc on it at all. So they're opposite equal angles, so they go together too. So if I compare 4 to 3, I'm going to compare x plus 3 to x plus 1 right here. And now watch what I did. I cross multiply put parentheses around these because I have to distribute see 4x plus 4 times 1 which is 4 multiply these that's 3x plus 3 times 3 which is 9 do my math subtract 3x I get an x subtract a 4 I get a 5 but we're not done because we're trying to solve for ln and pn well where's ln it's this thing right here that's why I had this circled already so it's x plus 3 so ln is x plus 3 so what do I do I just stick in an x or 5 for the x Add it to a 3, and I get an 8. Stick in the 5 for the pn, right, for the x under the pn. So x plus 1 is 6. That's all you do. Just plug it back in. Make sure that some, look, look some of these say solve for x, solve for y. Some of them say solve for these segments. So you got to make sure that you know what you're trying to solve for, all right? Okay, let's try the next one, number 12. Now I double check to make sure I hit resume. So I am recording now. So let's look at this, mid-segment. What do we know about the mid-segment of a triangle? Well, this is pretty easy. Remember, it says JH. This thing right here is the mid-segment. The mid-segment hits the midpoint of the two opposite sides. So you know that. Now you know two things about the mid-segment. You know it's parallel to the third side, which would be LM. But more importantly on this problem anyway, is to understand that it's equal to half of the third side. So it's half of this. This is x, by the way. I know it's little and it's hard to see. But that's x, and this is 30. So remember, the mid-segment is half of the third side. So if the third side is 30, then x is just 30 divided by 2. You should be able to do that in your head, and it's 15. And that's all you have to do. For these three right here, all you got to do is solve for x. You don't have to plug it back into anything. Just find what x is, and you're done. Pretty simple. Let's look at 13 same kind of deal except this one is x this time okay that's x I know it's small remember this is half of this or you could look at it the other way the third side is twice as big as the mid segment so this side see 30 is twice as big as 15 isn't it well this is twice as big as 9 so basically we just go 9 times 2 right so 9 times 2 
and that's 18. So x is 18. So this would be 18 if this is 9, because this is a mid-segment. Remember, jh, that's right there. That's the mid-segment. It's half of the length of the third side. So if this is 9, this has to be 18, because 9 is half of 18. All right, I hope that makes sense. All right, look at the next one. The next one's a little bit more confusing. Not a whole lot, I don't think. Because remember what JH is. It's a mid-segment. All right, so from here to here is a mid-segment. You know what I probably should have put on this, too? I should have said that this was a mid-segment. I didn't do that, but it is, okay? So I might have to change that on the test for tomorrow. All right, so that is a mid, that's the midpoint of this thing right here. That's pretty important, okay? So these two things are mid-segments. I didn't even label this with anything. and I don't have to, but I should have put a little tick mark here and here. Which means what? If this is 8, then this is 8. What's the whole thing? It's 16. Well, the mid-segment, which is this right here, that's your x, is half of this. Well, half of 16 is 8. There you go. 16 over 2, half of 16 is 8. So this answer is 8. x equals 8. All right, let's keep on rolling. We're almost done. That's not too bad at all. I'm at 21 minutes, and I'm almost finished. And I've been sitting here explaining. I probably could have done it in half the time if um, I, I wasn't explaining all this stuff. But let's take a look. 15 and 16 kind of go together. You've got a triangle, and you've got this segment equal to this one, and you've got this segment equal to this segment right here. This couldn't be any easier, especially for, for y. Yeah, I see, the, I see the fraction. I get it. You don't like fractions. So let's do the y first. We don't always have to go in order. Okay, so let's do the y first. These segments are equal to each other, so let them equal. So set them equal to each other. So uh, 5y minus 8 equals 2y plus 1. And now we just do some basic math. I'll skip a couple steps. Subtract a 2y, subtract a 2y, you get 3y. Add an 8 to this, and you get a 9. Divide by 3, and you get a 3. So y is equal to 3. As easy as that. X is probably the one that's a little bit tougher. But look, they're still equal. The geometry is easy. I mean, it's hardly even geometry. This segment is equal to this segment, so you just set them equal to each other. So let's set them equal to each other. I like the bigger one on the left-hand side. Five, uh, it's 4X. Let me make sure it's written like that. Yep. 4X minus 35 is equal to 1 fifth X plus 3. So let's do this. Let's, um, let's subtract. So subtract a 1 fifth x from this side. That'll get rid of this. Add a 35 to both sides and we'll get that. So let's see what happens. That cancels out right there. So 4x minus 1 fifth x. You could go 4 minus a fifth, I guess. I wouldn't do that. You know what I would do? I would do this. I want you to learn how to work with fractions. I'm going to take 4 and write it so it has a denominator of 5. So what over 5 is the same as 4? Well, 20 over 5, isn't it? See, 20 over 5 is the same as 4. So 20 over 5x minus 5x is 19 over 5x. I hope that makes sense to you. All right, it's just common denominator. If you want to go 4 and 4, or sorry, 3 and 4 fifths, you can, but 3 and 4 fifths is the same as 19 fifths anyway. All right. I'm not going to do any more with that because that's just basic arithmetic. Let's add these right here. 35 and 3 is 38. All right, here's some algebra that, I mean, you should be able to know, but not everybody does. So watch what we're going to do. How do I get rid of this fraction right here? I multiply by the reciprocal. That's what you do when you have a fraction being multiplied by a variable. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is 5 over 19. Notice why we do that. The reason we do that is so that the 5s cancel out and the 19 cancel out, and I got x by itself. See how nice and pretty that comes out to be. I'm going to put this over 1. Now watch, I can't just multiply this by 5 over 19. I have to multiply this by 5 over 19. Look, don't do this. Don't stick that in a calculator and go 38 times 5 divided by 19. You should know this. 19 goes into 19 once, and 19 goes into 38 twice. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it does. 2 times 5 is 10, and there you go. x is equal to 10. All right, let's take a look at 17 and 18. Look, 17 and 18 are almost identical to what we did over here. The only thing about the geometry is this. I've got parallel lines. I told you that this was equal to this. Let's make it so I can draw on here, okay? So this segment is equal to this segment. I know it's hard to see, but these two segments are equal to each other. If we have parallel lines cut by these two transversals, 
the uh, these segments are proportional to each other. So the proportion between these two is the same as the proportion between these two, which means this. What is the proportion of something to itself? Well, anything over itself is 1. So actually, the ratio is 1 to 1. So what is this ratio? It's also 1 to 1, which means they equal each other, basically. So if these two are equal, then these two are equal to each other. So let's set them equal, and let's do the math, okay? Um, I'm going to go 3x. Oops, I was writing in black. That's not going to help. Black on black. Let's do this. Let's put. Um, let's try another color. Let's go this light gray. So uh, I'm going to set them equal to each other. So I'm going to go 3x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 4. Now we um, subtract 2x from both sides. We can do that. Subtract 2x from this, and I get x. Add a 1, and we get 5. Look at that. Lo and behold, easy, easy problem. Okay, no, no difficulty at all. I think. Let's do this. Now, we had to know the geometry, and I already explained it to you, so these two will be equal to each other. So 3y is going to equal 2y plus 2. Again, the math is easy. Subtract a 2y from both sides, I get y equals 2. There it is. Couldn't be any easier. I'm trying to help you out here. All right, let's move on to number 19. All right, this is one of the last things we did. I believe this was from the last section that we covered. And what we do is we start off with... Um, uh, similar triangles, and how do you know they're similar? They didn't come right out and tell you, but you could kind of figure it out. I've got two angles of this triangle equaling two angles of this triangle, so we do know they're similar. Now, what is this line right here? That's the median because it hits at the midpoint of this opposite side. So does this. This hits at the midpoint of the opposite side because these two side or er, segments are given to be equal, and so are these two. So I've got a median, and we have a theorem that says that the median, well, actually. Um, this isn't the problem I was thinking of, uh, that the median is proportional to the sides, but what I have, I got similar triangles and I got segments and I can still say that these sides are proportional to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. So really we don't have the median right here. I probably should have put one in there. I guess I won't. I'll keep it like it is. So what we're going to do is compare the corresponding sides. How do you know which ones are the corresponding sides? Well look, this is opposite the one arc, and then what's opposite the one arc over here? x plus 1. So I'm going to compare those to each other. So 2x plus 1, compare it to x plus 1. And that should equal the um, ratio of the other two corresponding sides, 40 and 25. Now how do I know for sure that they go with each other? Well, you can look. 40 is opposite this 2 arc. 25 is opposite this angle with 2 arcs. Compare those to each other. So I've got 40 over 25. And now look, we've done this Boy, we've done this probably about four, five, six times, maybe something like that today. At least four, I think. So we um, cross multiply and make sure you distribute. So it's 25. If you wanted to, watch. If you wanted, to, instead of going 25 times these numbers, if you wanted to reduce this fraction, that might be easy. Okay, and then cross multiply. Whatever is good for you. So let's let's just do it this way. 25 times 2x plus 1. That's 50x plus 20. 5. Cross multiply here. What do we get here? 40x plus 40. Let's solve for x. Subtract 40 from both sides, or 40x from both sides, and I get a 10x. And let's subtract a 25 from both sides, and minus 25, what's that? That's 15, right? And then I divide by 10. Divide by 10. You could write it as a fraction if you wanted to, but look, dividing by 10 is just 1.5. That's a nice, easy way to write it. I'll just keep it like that, 1.5. If you wanted to, look, 5 goes into that twice, 5 goes into that three times. You could write 3 over 2. That would be fine, but 3 over 2 is 1.5, so is that. Any way you do that, it would be fine. All right, one more to do. Let's do number 20. Okay, here's the deal. This is the last thing that we did in that uh, section 7.6, I believe it was, or whatever the section number was. Uh, where you have one triangle and you've bisected the angle of the triangle. Now, what did the thing say? The thing said that the two sides are proportional to these segments that are um, that are broken up right here. So 20 is, like if I compared 20 to that segment, I would take 30 and compare it to that segment right there. Or you could go 20 to 30 and compare this to this. Our big problem is what? Our big problem is not knowing this segment. I didn't give a number here. But, like, what if, I don't know, I'm just making this up. What if y was, let's say, 10, all right? What if y was 10? What would this segment right here be? 
Remember, the whole thing's 28, and if this was 10, how would you find that? You'd go 28 minus 10, which is 18, so this would be 18. Now, I was just making up what y was, but y could be any number, under 28 anyway, y could be any number, how would you find this right here? You'd go 28 minus whatever that number was. If it was 10, you went 28 minus 10. If it was 11, you'd go 28 minus 11. If it was 20, you'd go 28 minus 20, right? But it's not any of those numbers, it's y. So what are you going to make this? You're going to make this 28 minus y. That's what this little length right here is going to be. So this is y, and this is 28 minus y. That's the key to this problem right here, is to understand to make this little segment 28 minus y. Don't make it an x. That's not going to help you. Make it 28 minus y, because you got to be dealing with the same variable. You have to be dealing with y's. So let's do like this, 20. Compare it to this one right here, which is 28 minus y. So watch, I went this side to the bottom. Let's go this side to this bottom. So 32y. Now I can cross multiply, and I can actually solve for y. It's not as bad as what it looks. So let's uh, cross multiply. 20 times y equals, um, I have no idea what that is. I guess I could do that in my head, but I'm not going to. Let's turn the calculator on. 28 times 30, 28 times 30, that's 840, okay, so that's 840 minus 30y. Let's do this, let's add a 30 to both sides, that'll give me a 50y equals 840. Divide both sides by 50, divide that by 50, and y, let's do that, 840 divided by 50, and that gives you 16.8, there you go, 16.8. So that's what this, um, value is right here. It's 16.8. If you really wanted to find from here to here, they're not asking you to do it, but if you wanted to, you just go 28 minus 16.8, and that would give you that length right there. All right, well, that's it. I hope you um, I hope you paid attention. I hope you ha this helped you a little bit. Um, what you might want to do is you might want to go through and do some of these problems on your own just to get some extra practice. I'm telling you, you're going to want to know how to do these problems tomorrow. That's a big hint. I haven't come right out and said it, but if you've been listening at all, you probably have an indication of what you're going to see on the test tomorrow, I hope. All right. Um, you know what I would do? I mean, if you know somebody, tell them to look at the YouTube page. Right, somebody in the class, because you know what I, I'm doing here, aren't you? I hope you know what I'm doing here. Look, I'll give you the, I'll give you the biggest hint of all. If you stuck it out this long, I'll just show it to you. Look, do you see that thing right there? Okay. Now I can't get any bigger of a hint than that. Let's get rid of all this mess. I can't get a bigger hint than that. So um, be ready for it tomorrow, please. There's no excuse, absolutely zero excuse to not be ready for it tomorrow. Okay, enjoy it. And remember, you've got to finish in the time that I give you tomorrow. So please have this down, have it practiced, and um, be ready to uh, take the test tomorrow. All right, happy test taking, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.